Okay, so while I was looking at the uh, ESP8266 yesterday, uh, I began to get some serial out of it. Uh, what I saw is a repeating pattern. So it's burst into life and there's this rather fast scrolling message. Now if I disconnect it again, uh, you'll see that it's doing a reset loop. And that is endless. There's a fatal exception here, and that's the start of the next message. Now this is at 115200 board, and my next step was to go online and start looking at websites for probable causes for this error. Now, I'm wondering if what I actually need to be doing here is holding the reset pin low, because right now the reset pin is floating. So let's have a look at which pin is the reset pin. Now, they, did they say anything in this guide about connecting the reset pin anywhere? So they're not showing anywhere with the reset pin. Let's just have a quick look. If I say AT. OK, let's keep out for a second so I can make sense of what it's been saying. It is doing a reset. It's doing a constant reset. OK, I think we need to stop that reset line floating. So the reset pin is there. I don't know if it's a high reset or a low reset. Let's try pulling with a single jumper reset high and see what happens there. So that continual reset problem that I was seeing is while it's initialising its stuff, it actually needs more current than this little USB thing, which is a powered hub, but it's not currently plugged in, is going to supply. Now, that's trying to supply via this, which isn't really designed to supply power either. So I've either got to try and power this and see if that stops the reset cycle or put the batteries in that I'd originally put with this supply over here before. I do happen to have a power supply for this hub in the robot cupboard here. Oh, that's the right supply. OK, they all look the same from the top. So let's plug this in. We go we now have a powered usb hub so it should be able to draw a little bit more current and if failing that we'll try the other bit and let's see if we get a better response this time no we're still not getting it okay so that's a bit of a shame what might be worth doing here would be to try and use the multimeter and we'll put it in milliamps and we'll do 200 milliamps DC and turn it on okay now there is a metal tag on these so we put that there and being careful not to nudge something else on this so what we're getting 150 160 milliamps it would probably like more but it's not getting it so all right we do have quite a big load yet seeing that this is going to be able to provide two amps because it's designed to be able to charge phones as well I don't think this thing will and I don't know if it's got any regulation on board and the other question is is what about this chip here so is that getting quite toasty no it's not too bad so I don't know what this 3.3 volt regulator that I bought I should check what that's actually going to handle again because I looked at the voltage on the data sheet and neglected to look at what it would hold in terms of current. So let's have a quick look at that now. TS2950CT. So put in the data sheet. We've got the data sheet on file now. So output current of up to 150 milliamps. My 3.3 volt regulator is not man enough for the job. And having this extra LED across there just to give me an indication that the power was on, maybe pulling it just over the edge. So the ESP8266 power requirements, let's just put that, or we'll have a look at this getting started because this might suggest needs 3.3 volts. It doesn't say here what the uh, amperage is. So let's say ESP8266 current requirement, here we are, 
All right, there's a nice little wiki page here. And does it have, now obviously we can't always trust the first thing we see, but we can at least get a rough ballpark figure. It won't be too far off. So actually, here it's suggesting that if we're transmitting on Wi-Fi, it's going to want 250 milliamps um, maximum. Uh, maybe less at some of the other different speed rates, uh, 802.11g and 802.11n. Uh, but I think a 150 milliamp supply, saying even 802.11g is going to be 145 milliamps, is cutting it close. Let's try removing this LED that's in parallel with it, that has been just there to uh, give me some feedback, and see if we get a better response when there is a bit less other load on the current. No, that's just not enough. So we really do have to rethink the power supply. Perhaps I'll be able to repurpose an Arduino Uno for that, uh, since it's got a 3.3 volt rail, and I'll see what that'll output, and I'll come back.